I have no idea what's going on right now, but what's up guys? Welcome back to episode 100 of the New World Let's Play series. And boy, do I have some big goals for this episode. Or should I say, big goal, singular. I want to complete 100 M3 dungeons in this episode alone to celebrate episode 100. Now, M3s are a lot harder than M10s, so some of these runs, especially in public groups, are going to take between 1 and 2 hours to complete, so I'm looking at over 100 hours of gameplay for this episode, but I want to celebrate. I'm very happy to have made it here at episode 100, and in the last episode we mostly knocked out PvP and PvP related PvE grinds, if that makes any sense, so I was able to save all my mutated runs, and we're going to be doing those to start things off. Right now we can choose between the Savage Divide and Starstone Barrows, and currently the Savage Divide has no unique uh, artifacts, that is until Season 3 ends, and that's when they're going to put the Tumblr Foot Wraps into the Savage Divide. But right now, our only artifact option is Starstone, which is the... What is it? The Blood Drinker Ring, I think it is? We still don't have that for some reason. It says it changes in 45 minutes, but it doesn't. I think there's still 5 days left on this rotation, and we have all 35 runs. We do have M3 unlocked, but like I said, constant bronze runs in public groups, so I'm not looking forward to it but I'm just happy to make it to episode 100, so we're gonna suffer through it. I gotta get together a void set. I don't think I have a single amulet with void protection on it, but we'll see. I don't know what I have in my storage sheds, as I do chest runs a lot, and then I dump whatever I get, because I'm almost always at weight limit still, which really sucks, but I guess it is what it is. That's, that's just part of New World, isn't it? Just suffering every day when you log on from weight restrictions. So unfortunately, we don't actually have time to do a single M3 run right now as the servers are going down in 30 minutes. So I was thinking about what I could do, and for this episode, I think it would be really special if we dedicated a single storage shed to all of the drops we're going to get from M3s, as it's going to be a lot from 100 M3s. I think I'm going to go with the Brimstone Sands settlement, as the weight is pretty much half of the potential weight that we can hold. I just need to relocate all of these items, because I don't want to get the gear all confused, so... Oh, is this going to encumber me? It probably is. Let me take all this out. I'm going to put that somewhere else, and every single drop we get that's worth mentioning is going to go in here, and we can look at it in the end. 100 M3s, man. What's that going to do for our account? And before we go any further, this massive episode is sponsored by nobody. However, if you'd like to help me out, you can always create a free account on Ashes of Creation with my referral link in the description down below. It'll help me out for when the game eventually launches, and you'll be better prepared for what could be the biggest MMO of all times. Okay, it's the next day, and I'm pretty sure this is what we're going to be using to start things off. Spear and Great Axe. Now, sadly, I did check all of my storage sheds. I don't have a single amulet with void protection, so I just put a void gem in the Ankh. And we also have one other redundancy in this setup. Uh, perforate. Fortifying perforates on my weapon, and it's on my headpiece. I don't have a single piece of gear, nor do I have a weapon with leeching cyclone, so that's going to be our first goal. Either the void protection amulet, or a spear, or a piece of gear with leeching cyclone on it, because that's a huge weapon perk and it really sucks to go without it, but we're going to be doing so many runs I think we'll just land one by chance. These I got from a corruption cache, and they're actually super nice. I was pleasantly surprised to find these on the account. And we have this almost base great axe with enfeebling maelstrom on it. I do believe from an M3 Lazarus. So this setup will work just fine for us. You can see the stats down here. Pretty much for the entire week, I'm going to be staying next to the faction rep in... What's this? Everfall, I believe? Yeah, Everfall. Gotta get your quest each time the dungeon's over, because the tokens actually have a lot of value now. And speaking of that, I haven't bought my chromatic seal for the day, so... There goes 19,000 more tokens. And also, another thing that's interesting with this setup, I just noticed they changed Fortifying Perforate to now increase your armor. It doesn't give you Fortify anymore. I guess it's technically a form of Fortify, but it is mechanically different. And I wonder if that stacks with the Void Dark Plate, which increases your armor by 20%. Is it multiplicative or additive between the two? That would be insane if it's multiplicative. We have quite a bit of armor in this medium setup. We already got a legendary Stormbound Spear, and this team is pretty chatty in the voice comms, so if they talk, there's not much I can do about that. But, let's see what the spear rolls with. I know they changed around all the named weapons. Let me try not to get one shot in the process. Oh, look at that Leeching Cyclone already! What? We're like, what, five minutes in? Not even a minute 22 into our first run of 100 and already got one of the items we were looking for. Look how strong Cyclone is. Hits like 7k on everything. Another Stormbound Spear in like the very next room. Okay, I was about to say that there's really not much incentive to do M3s considering you get the same artifact drop rate from M1s. However, 
It's looking like there is an incentive, and it's definitely the loot. I'm getting an insane amount of legendaries. Okay, so it, it comes with Cyclone and Jagged by default. We've just rolled a full abyss. Okay, okay, that's the one I'm using. Holy crap, we just rolled full abyss. Alrighty. We also got some Great Axes, which are both pretty terrible. <laughs> that spear is insane. I just need to go cut another Lightning Topaz. I only cut one, because I realized I still have a, an Opal in the one I was about to run. And I have to go pick Air Mode, and I don't feel like doing that right now. You know, the crazy part is, I can't even wait to go cut that topaz. I think I'm just going to slot the one opal I have in here and use that for the remainder of the run. At least when I'm able to, the combat timers are so ridiculous. No! I'm an idiot, dude. Oh, look at that. People in Skira, that's pretty cool. I'm a freaking idiot. Ignore that clip. Never mind. God damn it. Ow! I'm going to freaking throw a gravity well at his eyes myself. Okay, well, there's the first M3, and it was gold, much to my surprise. Feels like they made it a little bit easier. I don't know. I remember this being... <laughs> what the hell? Alright, where's my bag? Hold on, let's check if we got the artifact before anything else. No, we didn't, but that's why we're doing 100 runs. <laughs> god, just saying it after doing one run, it's like, oh my god, 99 more to go. But, how we're going to be keeping track is these uh, mutator reward caches. They're not all going to be gold, I can promise you that, but we're going to have 100 of them of any variety, any variety of tiers, by the time we're done. That's how we'll keep track. Ooh, our first attunement weapon. We got an Eternal Great Axe. It's not going to compare to the Abyss that we're going to get in the future, but it is our first Abyssal Attunement Great Axe, and it's not bad. It's actually not the worst I've seen. That's pretty bad. This can be a good shield if you reroll sure footing for, like, Enchanted. That's arguably Abyss shield right there. What do we get for the gloves? Not bad, not bad. Whoa, full Biss alert. We already got another Biss item on the account. Check out this ring for the Majolner or potentially even the bow build in the future. Hardy Blighting Damage, Leeching, full con, perfect 700 roll. Yeah, I'm counting that as Biss. I got three Wolfgangs. Did that say three as a little subscript next to that wolf? That's the pet skin from here. Oh, I did. Do I? I think I already have it unlocked. Yeah, I, I probably got it before. That's why nothing popped up, but... Okay, they must be fairly common to have three in two runs. <laughs> One and a half runs, actually. Oh, there we go. What the hell? Why is that always so delayed? I just received a very surprising drop. One of the biggest teases in the game prior to Season 3 release was the Starstone Ring. It dropped with fire damage and, uh, no, fire damage and refreshing, and it could not roll Hardy. Hardy was not even on the table, and I remember when I discovered that, I was like, what the hell is the point of this ring? What a tease. They fixed it. In Season 3, you can get Hardy, and that's exactly what we just got. A full Biss Fire Staff Ring. Two Biss Rings and a Biss Spear so far. And this is, yeah, this is just run number three. We're getting a bis per run right now. This is ridiculous. Is that three legendary bags on the floor right now? Yeah, one, two. Oh, baby, a triple. M3s are kind of busted right now. Jeez. Four. Okay, four. <laughs> for, for one little part. Four, huh? Those aren't bad. Please come on, void protection. Yes! Dude! Oh, I called that. This is, oh, this is beautiful too, jeez. Those are beautiful. Okay, yeah, yeah, M3s are cool. I like these. All right, it's another day. Time to pick up another chromatic seal before the dungeon starts. And if we stay on top of our faction missions related to the dungeons themselves, we should be able to maintain our tokens throughout the whole duration of this video. I'm not quite sure about the goal. I don't think we're making 5,000 gold a day from these dungeons. Um, but the tokens shouldn't be an issue. You see, you get 4,000 tokens per bonus mission, so that's 12,000 just from the three bonus missions. And I think it's like 700 after that. So if we really stay on top of these, we can maintain our tokens, which is good to see. We're going to have a lot of chromatic seals by the time we're done with this. Wait, the tank left? Oh, man. Ooh, our first eternal spear. Void attunement spear, come on. Be decent. Oh, it is freaking decent all right holy crap that's getting linked to the group 
<laughs> best pickup. I can already tell the day just started, but that's the best pickup of the day. That is beautiful, man. Yes, we got it. We got the enchanted roll and the stormbound buckler. Full bis, baby. That enchanted roll is so rare. That's it right there. That's the shield you're going for from here. This is a very expensive shield. I'm pretty sure if you were to buy that on the trading post, it would have to be like at least 40k. That's a rare roll to get the enchanted right there. Remember that clip where I was complaining and talking about how you can't trust people's gear these days? I promise I'm not being dramatic. Look at this, a tier 2 fire gem. A nature gem. A tier 2 fire gem. Oh, well now we got a pristine fire gem. Fire gem. A tier 2 diamond. A fire gem and a tier 2 diamond. Like, you have to check, man. I know people don't like it being a requirement to link your gear, but man, if I took this guy, it would have been at least an hour and a half run. Oh, look at that, our first legendary Stormbound Flail. I'm not even using a flail, so that must be a pretty rare snag. I've been getting tons of great axes and spears. The uh, influential loot system can be a little annoying sometimes because I already have all the spears and great axes I'm ever gonna want, but this flail is really good because by default it drops with Mending Vortex which is a very expensive perk. I think the craft mod for it is about 10k. Luckily, we already have a flail with it, but let's see what we rolled on this. Keen. I'm pretty sure we rolled keen on that. I, I'll keep it because it's more of an offensive flail. It's got the keen and keenly jagged. My other one has plague strikes and something else. It's more of a defensive utility flail, so I'll definitely keep this one. Oh my god, we got it, you guys. We got the freaking blood drinker, man. How many runs did that take us? They say it's a 1 in 10. I tend not to believe them, <laughs> because that was... God, that had to be run 30 plus here. I know this is only the 10th run for this episode, but I almost hit mutation cap, um, like last month when this was on rotation, so yeah. We definitely worked for this ring. I'm gonna link that one to the group. This is an amazing group, by the way. Ooh, Abyssal Attunement Bow. These are always exciting. Attunement is so good on a bow, come on. That one's not exciting. I'm gonna keep it, because I, I scrapped a few and I do regret it. I like building up these attunement weapons from mutations, but God, I'm never gonna use that one. Boy, do I have a good piece of gear to show you guys. This was another decent round. I think it was sub 30, we got silver though. But just look at this piece of gear that we got. I don't know, maybe something good came from the chest as well, but I know these boots are top tier. Medium con with slash, grit ward, and health. This is... Ugh, dude, pieces like this make these M3s so much fun. Because I can think of so many setups already that I'm building that I can use these in. Ooh, legendary eternal breastplate. Honestly, I would be open to replacing our void dark plate. I don't even know if it's really doing all that much in here. It only has PvP perks on it, enchanted ward, and shirking health. Let's see what we rolled on this. Ooh, that one's nice. I'm not gonna wear that, I don't really have any active grit right now, but definitely a keeper. Man, I have no idea what's going on with the boots, but we are just on fire. Medium con, POD strike and health. Incredible boot drops tonight. There's so many different strategies for this boss as well. It's probably, this has to be other than the halfway point in Barnacles of Black Powder, the worst boss in the game. Like, it's just such a miserable fight, and it doesn't make any sense. Alright, time for another day of M3s. Here goes the first run of the day. First time M3 with this mutator, so I'll need to learn a bit. That's a little- that's fine. That's fine. You told me before the run started. That's perfectly fine. I checked your gear. You're good to go. The funny thing is, this run took me two hours to recruit for. There is almost zero interest in M3s right now, considering all the mutations have the same drop rate for the artifacts. I personally think that's a little silly if the only incentive to do mutations 2 and 3 is the gear that you get, and most of it's BOP, so you can't even sell it if you were interested in PvEing for make mo to make money. I don't know. I feel like M3 should have a much higher artifact drop rate, because, yeah, it took me about two hours to get this team together, so we'll see how we do. At least it was under an hour and the people were nice. Can't complain too much with that. But we did pull one really, really good drop. Honestly, first run of the day and we already got what I would consider, you know, the MVP drop of the day. Check out these pants. Slash, grit, and health. Light con pants. We also got a pair of boots pretty much identical to this, I think, in a run yesterday, so. If we can build up a full set of this this week, 
I mean, even if we don't, right, we can fill in pieces with the Syncretic set because they have the exact same pieces. They're just very costly to upgrade. So this drop right here, it saves me, I don't know, 30, 40k worth of coins between the Chromatic Seals and the Armor Matrix and the Craft Mod. So yeah, this, this is really nice, man. Maybe even more. And we skipped the last few named mobs of the run just because it was long enough and we wanted to finish it. But afterwards, we were like, we may as well go back and kill him for some loot. And look what I got. I rolled Grit Ward on a heavy con heart gem Monarch's Breastplate. So yeah, these two pieces in one run. That is very, very good for the first run of the day. And I'm definitely glad we went back for those named mobs. It's usually worth it. Oh, this is a really nice kite shield, actually. I'm keeping that. It's usually worth it just to go back and kill them. They don't take much time. Good loot. Season pass level 89 from what exactly? You must get season pass XP for killing things. I got a whole level just from killing ancient mobs. There's got to be a lot of kills required for that. But actually, while I have you guys here, let me just... Well, let me finish off clearing these mobs first. But we did get a legendary pair of eternal pants, and I'm hoping they're usable because I have not had a single usable piece of eternal gear all week, except for that attunement weapon spear we got, which was pretty good. Pretty freaking good, but let's see what these are. Oh, these are definitely usable. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I may consider the drop an amethyst on me, I do. What's the gear score, 695? Yeah, they are usable. I'll debate using them because I do have a lightning harnessing on my legs right now, which is really nice. 2% extra damage is a lot when you're hitting like 9k's with your cyclone. That is the first Stormbound Rapier in Legendary, actually just in any gear score that we've seen all week. I have no idea what the perk on that even is. It's definitely a uh, Keenly, ja Keenly Jagged. All of the Stormbound weapons come with Keenly Jagged, I'm just not sure what weapon perk is on that. I think they can handle that retro, let's check it out. Sundering Repose. Damn, Shirking Flames. That's tough. Yeah, unlucky, I guess. And, um, nice little DPS life stuff here. No, thank you. Checking in on run 21 with you guys, I have a very odd piece of gear to show you. It's not a very good piece of gear, but it is very statistically unusual. It's an Abyssal Conditioning headpiece, heavy headpiece with intelligence, Abyssal Conditioning, Healing Tomb, and Ice Harnessing. So not only did it come with an Ice Gauntlet perk, it came with the one specific harnessing for the Ice Gauntlet, as well as the stat for the Ice Gauntlet. I don't think I'll ever get any use out of it, because Abyssal Conditioning is not very good in PvP, and I don't see myself using an Ice Gauntlet in PvE anytime soon, um, but it is, like I said, very statistically odd. Oh, these are pretty nice earrings. I don't think I would ever use them, but that doesn't mean they're not nice. Basically, duplicating toast instead of the nimble I have on my current earrings. Which, hey, I think they'd massively need to buff duplicating toast maybe from 16% to like 76%, but that might be useful because it is kind of annoying keeping up with these um, powerful ancient ward potions. Pretty weird materials and for some reason oil to make them. Oh, that's disappointing. I've been playing this account, I think, going on two years now, and we've just landed our first refreshing hearty sacred ring, and it has dexterity on it. That is so disappointing. I wouldn't use it even if it was the the, the perfect draw with either con or focus, because we have our own healing ring. We got it on a chest run somewhere, I have no idea where it is, but we already have abyss healing ring. Oh, right here. Healing breeze, hearty sacred. Intelligence, I can tolerate, but dexterity... That's so sad. What a slap in the face. I just did a couple runs with an absolutely incredible team, and it looks like we accomplished rank 1 score for the week on Starstone Barrow's Mutation. 69,225, so shout out to these other four people. Absolutely insane gamers. I don't know how to pronounce your name, Leacass, but great tank, dude. Some of those pools were insane. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to get clear time uh, rank 1. We did get rank 3, and apparently... Oh, I got rank 3 with a different team. With this team, we got rank 4. Huh. Well, either way, incredible team. And I appreciated the runs, because they were so quick. Doing 100, any speed boost you can get is generally welcome. So far, we're up to 27, so that's probably where I will call it for tonight. We'll pick up tomorrow. We got an item that seems like a small pickup, but it's actually a bigger deal than it seems. Let me cleanse my debuff first. A strike protection amulet. Finally, 15% less strike damage. Why that's important is because when you're doing speedruns here, you can run 5 con and swap to this amulet 
Sorry, I can't control voice chat, but you can run five, but you can run five con and swap to the strike protection amulet with the strike gem in it before you get to this boss on a speed run. And generally speaking, he won't be able to one shot you with his big slam attack that he does. Cause it's all strike damage. Watch. I'll wait for one. Look, I'll get hit by this. That was all strike damage, no void damage. You saw that 7,500 strike splat? <laughs> yeah, I ate one for a clip, buddy. Oh, it looks like on that last run we just did, we got a transmog token. You can only get these once a week from Elite Chess. I guess those count as Elite Chess. Pretty cool. We're up to five so far. We also got some pretty decent great axes. Plural. Vicious Gravwell Refreshing Move with Khan. Pretty nice. And then Keen Vicious Refreshing Move. This one has Dex, so a little less nice, but I can't get myself to scrap a Keen Vicious Refreshing Move. And then also the Spear. Not bad. I mean bad, but <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm not going to scrap it. Yo, know, I just got two really crazy drops in there. Let me throw a grab for some crowd control and I'll show them to you. So, light con pants, shirking energy, mending protection, and health. Freaking insane. And then heart gem, monarch's pants with intelligence, empowering incinerate, and the usual two perks you get. And these are just freedom clubs. But yeah, two nice pants in a row. We take those, considering we're running out of runs. I think I only have one more run left after this dungeon. That's it for the week. I can finally do some other things because this has consumed basically my entire weekend. About 12 hours a day to get through them all. Oh boy, you have reached the weekly limit to enter mutations. Here it is! Finally, we are on run, we are on run 35 for the week. And we're running with a couple unfamiliar faces, so I hope this run goes well. But either way, I'm so happy to be done for the week. Here's the current distribution so far. 13 bronze, 7 gold, and 14 silver. Hopefully 8 gold after this. That would be rather nice. So I'm pretty sure it's a fundamental law of the universe that the last run of the week can never go smoothly. The tank's kid wet the bed, so he's being a good dad and going to tend to his kid. Uh, kudos to him for that. It's, it's weird playing MMOs as an adult because almost everyone you run with has a kid. It really makes you wonder if you're next. Um, also, Commander Styx is a viewer, so I want to say what's up to him in this clip. And Ko Yi Chong doesn't speak English, and he's not quite sure why the tank's not moving and he's getting frustrated. So there's always little internal conflicts in a group. It really gives you that MMO feeling. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, why are we stopped? But yeah, the last run never goes smooth. <sighs> it's always something. A little spin to win. A oh, purple bag for the final run. Well, that's it. 50 minutes and 54 seconds. Not the run I wanted to end on, but that's okay. We're done. Man, the loot is so trash from this final boss. It has to be bugged. I don't think I've ever gotten a legendary from him unless... No, I've gotten a few legendaries. I've also gotten the artifact. Oh, did he get it? Did he get the commander sticks? Link it. Link it for the video. Hey, my boy. Good shit. Let them let them know that's on vid. But yeah, I don't know. The loot from the final boss is absolute dog water. Anything good to wrap up with? Uh, another full Bist Fire Staff ring. That's kind of cool. The earrings here suck. Yeah, not much. Okay, well, we're done. Let's get out of here. Well, let's do a quick tally for the week. In 35 M3s, we got 14 bronze, 14 silver, and 7 gold. Not the best, but I'll take it. And I guess we're free to do whatever we want on the game. For the next one day and 21 hours basically two days i'll probably do pvp content maybe go farm the abyss i really want to use fire staff abyss and whatever it rotates to next i love the fire staff in pve so much it's just if i'm gonna use it i want to use the abyss with it so those are the two things i'll probably focus on might not throw any footage in this video i'd like to keep this mutation related but if we get some cool clips in pvp i'd be pretty obliged to throw them in Man, I haven't been in Everfall since they reworked all the cities. I've been sitting here all week getting faction quests up there, but I'm just now noticing how nice this rework is. This city is gorgeous, dude. At every single Halloween, me and my girlfriend go up to St. Helens in Oregon for Halloween Town, and this is what it looks like. This is like my favorite aesthetic of town. This is I would love to get a cup of coffee here. But I just finished getting together my VGIG setup that I'm going to be running PvP with, and it's pretty freaking sweet. If you missed the last episode, we crafted these gloves ourselves at the Gypsum Kiln. First we had to farm the wood grain gauntlets, it took about 8 or 9 hours. Then we put Slowing Tether on them, completing our VGIG setup. We've got Scream on the Life Taker, um, Healing Tomb, which is all you really need. 
on the Ice Gauntlet, and then just a bunch of Shirking Heels in the Void Dark Plate. And actually, now that the update's gone through, this is currently November 19th for context. I know you're not going to see this episode for a very long time. Um, but now that the update's gone through, I can actually replace Refreshing instead of Shirking Heels at the Gypsum Kill on all these Enchanting Tights. And we can put pretty much anything we want. We can put a Conditioning Perk. Heck, we could probably put Elemental Aversion, potentially even Enchanted Ward. It's just going to be the Chromatic Seals that's going to hold this up. We currently have four, and it's three per, per, or three per craft, so... I don't think I'm going to be spending them on this set. I think this set's good enough. Plus, the refreshing's really nice. Anyway, enough blabbering. I just wanted to say that I really like the look of the new Everfall. Looks great. Such an MMO feeling town, you know what I mean? It's bugs. Yeah. It's, it's underground. Damn it. Yeah. Again? Oh, it's man. Bugs. Yeah, it's bugged. All right, let's hope we get it here. This is the last major cache. Nope. That's the last major corrupted portal up on the map right now, so I think we're done with this. This abyss has been plaguing me for so long. I think in total I've dedicated, I don't know, it's gotta be at least eight or nine days going for this dang great axe, and they recently increased the drop rate too. Uh, I guess it's just something I have to do in small sessions. Let's open up the corrupted caches because if I remember correctly, the perk pool on uh, this gear that you get from here is really, really good. I have two abyss pieces just from corrupted caches on this account so far. Uh, not that many legendaries, I'll be honest. Kind of scary. Let's see what we got. 683 named Damon Heart. I wonder if you can upgrade that at the kiln. Not that I'd want to, it's not very nice. What else do we got? Purples are all pretty bad. Uh, trash and... Yeah, trash. Dang it! Ooh, what's this? Purifying Heart Thrust Damage. Is that worth upgrading? I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> Unlucky. Ah, uh, no, you can't do that. Had to heal up real quick. It's all good. We all gotta heal up every now and again. So I gotta go for the heavy. Damn, he dodged that? No way. That was a good dodge. Yeah, we got the healer. We got, the healer. We got the healer number one. We still have Henry to deal with, which is healer number two. Heart rune. But he can't, he can't heal right now. God damn. Yeah, he can't heal right now. We just gotta kill him while he's in beast mode. Alright, that's... That's him taken care of. Now let's get high ground and we should win this. This is a tricky jump. Ah, oh, cool, we make those. It is. It really is. He's screamed, oh. he's tethered. That's the wrap. Let me let me go into Ice Tomb real quick. That's all it's all it's a brown, bro. It's like Easy. Alright, coming back in on the second. Good. Tethered. Uh give me a name. Oso, uh, Oso, Oso, Oso. Henry? Henry, Henry, Henry. Okay, Henry, Henry, I'm, com I'm coming for Henry, pause. I mean, I'm, I'm approaching, I'm approaching Henry. Ah! Oh, <laughs> Tethered, okay, I got him. <laughs> Sorry, I had to reword it. I couldn't, like, I couldn't go out like that. Thank you, let's get this dub ski. Are they, oh, they're AFK, hold on, let's, let's get this. Unless this was a bait. This, are they? Bait as fuck. Yeah, this is bait. I don't know. They're trying to get like some content on us right now. Fuck it, dude. Wait, is that meteor shower? Hold on. No, this isn't content. They're just bad. All right, get in there and fight, man. <laughs> I screamed him in place. Go for Straza. Straza over here on the other side. Stay on her. Okay, they're confused. They think they're in Genesis right now. Fire, firebird. Disrespectful. Get back here! Oh, some heavies. Get oh, the, where's the last one? Did he actually leave the spawn? He did, I think. Where'd he go? Mm -mm. I feel like he's being oh, weird and hiding he's down here. Season. No way. Where the hell did he go? That's gross! Is there like an invisible bug? Dude, maybe he glitched under the map like it's COD 4. Is this gonna go to smoke? Do we lose what? here? But yeah, we lose. We definitely lose here. They, they cheating. Father fuck is cheating up there. Father fuck is cheating up there. I'm gonna ask him. Saying? I'm gonna ask him. In the area. Where's your boy? He said ma ha ha. That nigga said ma ha ha. Uh uh. He got ma ha ha these nuts. No no no, we win this. We win this. Come back. How do we win? He's not here. Told you. Ah, you got you killed him, man. See, you got that. The storm on the stairs. Come on, let me get. I land this heavy. No, if I had an unending thaw, he would have died. If I had unending thaw. 
That was a poor problem. Screams, got him. Well, a pretty underwhelming checkpoint 3 reward, but we did get a new piece of gear with Shirking Heels. Uh, these Prestige Shatterers boots, Shirking Heels invigorated in health. It's kind of a meme perk invigorated, but it's not actually the worst, because right now disease is so rampant, considering they just buffed plagued crits, and um, also altered the way disease works mechanically, so it's a little more prevalent in the meta right now, they kind of buffed it in general. So invigorated, I'll take it on the off chance I want to make an invigorated set one day, plus we're at the limit of praise also, so may as well spend it on something. So we're about to do something a little impulsive. Maybe haps a little stupid, but I was looking through my storage shed for the Syncretic Gear Set, the Slash Conditioning and Grit Ward Set, because I'm getting together a Bruiser Set right now, and it would go perfectly into that. But then when I typed in Syncretic, I found the Syncretic Musket in my storage sheds, and I have no recollection of getting this item. So what must have happened is I was doing a chest run in Brimstone Sands, I got this, didn't notice, and just threw it in my storage sheds with everything else. Because there's no way I wouldn't have upgraded it if I did get this. It's a best in slot musket. So I think instead of wasting the seals, well I wouldn't say wasting, but instead of spending the seals on a piece of syncretic gear, we can always do that in the future. I want to have fun before my mutations come back off cooldown, so we're going to upgrade the syncretic musket and tinker around with this today. It is such a steep cost though. 15k coins, 60k tokens, and 3 days worth of gameplay for this upgrade. It's a ridiculous amount of chromatic seals in my opinion. It should be one or two, like the artifacts. Um, but the only decision left is do we put Crippling Powder Burn or Enchanted? <sighs> Weirdly enough, I'm leaning towards Enchanted. I know Powder Burn is super freaking good for follow-up shots like with Shooter Stance, but I don't know. Because AGS did recently put out, uh, I think it was a Discord message saying they're going to buff the viability of muskets in PvE. So if that happens, then Enchanted is a way better bet than Crippling Powder Burn. So I think to be safe, we'll go with Enchanted. Such an expensive craft, I don't want to have to redo it in the future. I have to use this in PvE and, you know, Crippling Powder Burn doesn't work well there. So we'll go with this. Damn, that's a very expensive craft. It's weird, like I said, this is impulsive because I normally don't play Musket on this game, but I'm in the mood for it today. Ah, oh, full best in slot musket, man. Now what do I run it with? Maybe I should go farm the finisher rapier, too. Ooh, got here just in time. Want me to solo this? Hold on, it's possible if I put a tether. Call me Theodore Roosevelt, baby. Ah! Okay. Ah, uh, I forgot more stuff spawns after, but it's not aggroed on me yet. Let me get these people up. Please don't aggro, please don't aggro. Uh, they aggroed. Oh, thank god. We got it. Is my recorder working? Yes, it is. Finisher, the, the rapier artifact. This is a hard farm to sustain. You have to do so much recruiting to get people here, and half the people don't even know where it is. It looks like someone else got it too, hopefully, because this farm dies fast, especially since after the boss dies. These three mammoths spawn, and they are so annoying. They each have their own element. They don't really drop anything good. They're just an annoyance for the most part. So yeah, the farm dies out quick. Plus, the respawn times are pretty long. It's a lot of work to keep people here, is what I'm saying. So you have to get lucky on this artifact, or you're going to be in for a very, very long uh, recruiting day, which is never fun because you're just spamming chat. Ooh, finally done with all the quests on this finisher. This is the worst quest by far, where you have to kill 30 of these blighted boars or something like that. It says how it describes it on the weapon. Well, I guess I can't see it anymore, but it says kill 30 of these boars across Elijah and Wilds. Except they only spawn right here, and there's only 5 spawns, and each spawn takes between 5 and 7 minutes to come back. It's just such a poorly bottlenecked quest. It's like a forced time gate. I hate stuff like that. But let's get out of here because that was the final quest. We can upgrade it at the kiln now. Aha! I knew I had some from when I used to cut ironwood on this account. It's a bit of a weird choice, but I think I'm going to be going with uh, Thwarting Strikes as the final perk on this rapier. Uh, there's not much else you can do if you're running a bleed build. You could go keenly empowered. 
or thwarting strikes. I think those are the only two options because with flourish and finish, with the second passive here, gain grit on both flourish and finish, and this is your biggest, you know, boost to damage. And also here on flurry, if you do run this for PVE, you have grit on the entire move. So I don't think you have much of a choice, especially on this rapier. If you're going with a different rapier, like a, another two perker that you're upgrading, I believe you can just put Omni on that and you'll be fine because this is a bleed specific rapier. So I think we'll do thwarting. Come down here. Uh, it's equipped, so I can't currently upgrade it. Hold on. Domingo's Blade? <laughs> that's, that's not the name of it. What the hell? Maybe that was supposed to be the name of it. It makes sense. I mean, it's a more fitting name in my opinion, but hey, what the hell do I know? Let's go ahead and put... Can you put the Warding Strikes on here? Yes, you can. Yeah, it's so weird. That doesn't feel right, putting Thwarting Strikes on a Rapier, but it makes sense when you look at the passives on the perk tree. Sure. Why not? Uh, got him. I didn't even bring food, bitches. <laughs> I got him. Got him. Whoa! Oh, check it out. That's nice to see. We got the nimble coat on PvP track 109. I honestly forgot that there were still artifacts post PvP track 100. Or maybe they got moved down to PvP track 20. I'm not sure, but I'm only missing the nimble coat and the unyielding helmet. So I guess now we're just missing the unyielding because I'm definitely taking that. Unless this headdress is really, really nice because it is of the scholar. Let's see. Oh, dear lord. Oh, crap. <laughs> Do we take... I want this headdress so bad, man. It's like we're probably gonna roll the nimble coat again in the future, right? God, why do they always give me multiple good items on one track? I swear 90% of the tracks are like trash, 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 and then you get the 10% where it's like this and this. I'm taking the coat. I'm gonna regret that in the future though. Oh my god. If that was shirking heals instead of health, I would probably take this. But it's not, so I'll take the nimble coat. God, begrudgingly, begrudgingly I'll take the nimble coat. I'm having so much fun with this rapier setup by the way. From those M3 star stones that we ran, I got this and I was just looking through my storage shed for some unending thaw gear and I was very surprised to find it. It works perfectly for our setup. Getting so many kills, it's absolutely insane damage. But yeah, we have how long until the mutations reset so we can get back to the whole point of this episode. We have 4 hours and 50 minutes left, so I'm going to bed early tonight so I'll pick that up tomorrow. Back into PvP. Well, we got the supplicant shoes, and this is post the update where you can upgrade them. I believe they're named now. And we got enfeebling skewer instead of health. That's kind of weird. That's not very good, and we don't really need the coins, so I'll probably just end up taking these. And I don't run skewer too, that's the crappy thing. I started running cyclone when I do run spears, so I don't think I'll ever get use out of these, but maybe we can upgrade them at the kiln. I'll have to check. I mean, it's probably not worth the three chromatic seals, but that's pretty cool. That's good to see. I always pick up those shirking heels rolls when you get them now. Hmm, that's a pretty interesting checkpoint too. We got the new flint stick and the new champion's ring. And both have good reasons to take them. I could replace shirking lightning with any weapon perk or anything else, attunement, you name it. Honestly, if I take this, I'd probably put flamethrower on it. Because that would be a freaking insane flamethrower auto staff. Uh, man. But if I take this, I could put any damage instead of sacred. That's... They're... You know what? I've been landing champion drinks so much lately, but none of the previous ones were upgradable. I have faith we're going to continue to land these. I'm going to take the flint stick. There's less jewelry than there is uh, weapons. It's probably more rare to get the flint stick. So I'll take this, and I don't think we're going to put anything on it anytime soon, because seals are just such a pain in the ass to get. Yeah, pretty trash checkpoint 3, though I am tempted to take this predator's hook just for the skin, because I would almost certainly use a transmog token to make my great axe look like that. That's actually a pretty good skin. All these predator weapons have pretty nice skins. And this is just trash. And the gypsum orb is not even a choice, so... Yeah, I think I'm gonna pass on it though. 16k salt's kinda steep and we're only 2k salt off 50, so if I do if I do land the unyielding, I'd like to be able to pick it up and not have to farm salt for like an hour, so... Yeah, I'll pass on it, but that was a pretty cool skin. So the mutation finally rotated, and this week we have a choice between... Oh, the leaderboard rewards, right. 
since the mutation changed, we got... Ooh, dang, people beat the crap out of our score. We ended fourth place? What about for time? Fourth place as well. At least we finished top five for both. Fine. <laughs> I mean, the skins are ugly anyway. Let me, let me check it out. Normally, they give you... Ooh. They changed them. These don't look too bad. Let me put on... I can't see. Go away. I, I don't know what any of these do. Let me apply. Does it have a nice cape? Oh yeah, nice. They got rid of the little Toys R Us spikes around your collar. These were the old skins for Dynasty and Genesis. Hey, these look decent. <laughs> Alright, good job, New World, finally. Jeez, um, but what I was saying is we have a choice between the Ennead and Genesis, so it's gonna be a pretty laid back week. We're gonna do the Ennead until we get the wall artifact, and then we're gonna go to Genesis. But actually, there's a caveat to that because I might just want to run any ad the whole week because it drops Hellfire gear, like gear with flame conditioning, which is invaluable in PvP right now. Blunderbuss plus Fire Staff is like in every 3v3 and it's so overtuned right now. So flame conditioning gear is like pretty much bis, and that would be a very easy way for me to get some. It's just the Ini has a long dungeon, and I don't even have M3 unlocked in it since they reset from M10. Um, so I'd have to apply to other people's lobbies, but I can't even do that until 5am tomorrow when I get my runs back, which is kind of lame. I feel like when the mutation swaps, you should get all your runs back, because I got all geared up, uh, for the Ennead tonight, and, yeah, we can't even do it. This is a really nice bow, though. Found it in one of my storage sheds, so we're gonna crush the Ennead tomorrow. Happy with these skins, though. Let me take the bow off. Get a better look at that. Yeah, that's, that's the one for clear time. I'm gonna rock that. Looks good. Okay, well, it's the next day and we finally have our runs back, but there is another challenge for this week. The Ennead is already a pretty difficult challenge if you're running with public groups, but they went ahead and gave us Unstable as well. Upon dodging, players are inflicted with a dot, and if you dodge three times, uh, like a fire circle spawns under you or something, this week is going to be miserable. But I, I have three different options to run this M3. I could either... Do a couple M1s and M2s to get up to M3, and then I would just have to do more M3s uh, to make up the total 100, I guess, next week. Hopefully it would take me less than 5 to reach M3, or I can just wait for someone else to make an M3 lobby. But there's an M1 lobby active right now, and it doesn't look like anyone's going to be doing M3 Ennead. Because keep in mind, you can get the wall artifact from M1, and the Ennead is a pretty difficult dungeon, so there's not much incentive to do M3s. I might have to be able to make my own lobbies to get this done. I'll probably have to join this M1, goddammit. <sighs> Alright, let me apply. Ooh, we got the Grave Robber's hat! This is actually a really nice headpiece. And we got the health roll on it! No freaking way! I mean, it's only in 683, but for PvP, does that really matter? God, that is a nice headpiece. I remember I spent the 3500 any ad material that I got from the season pass on that headpiece and rolled nature harnessing and I was like oh well in the future I'll use some gypsum or not some gypsum some chromatic seals to re-roll it I don't have to we just got it on our first M run with the roll that I was looking for well I guess I could still technically put shirking heels on it in the gypsum kiln if I want to in the future I guess one benefit of having fire mutation is we're all running fire resistance and look at the beams they do fire damage to you so it should be a much easier week to get gold Although that dodge debuff in M3 is going to be something to watch out for. Oh, look at that. I already got a Hellfire Spear. Sweet. Vicious and Flame Attunement. Yeah, it's going to be a good week for Hellfire gear if I can manage to stick this place out. Alright, pretty easy gold run. Faster dungeon than I thought, 23 minutes? I must remember the day one experience when nobody knew what the hell to do and this boss fight was like 30 minutes of wipes. I wonder if you can get the wall artifact from either of them. Don't you get two loot bags here? Let's see. Okay, we didn't get it from that, nor from that. But hopefully you have a chance to get it from either. Ooh, and more loot chests too. How much is that? Five? Five loot chests? Oh my god, from M3 Starstone we were getting three. Faster dungeon with more loot. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who was that? Ice Spike for the KO? Nah, it was the Tondo for the KO. That should be it, right? Oh, it was bronze, but that's our first M3. We did get a legendary bag. Here's to the 
Hope of a wall artifact, that would be cool. Someone was running an M3, they wanted me to run Rapier and Ice Gauntlet to join, which is what I was running in PvP anyway, so I had a nice setup ready to go, and I loved every second of it. It was bronze. However, it was gold up until the pool before the final boss. We had a terrible troll moment, lost all of our points right before the final boss, but the final boss went okay. We're running the finisher with the ice gauntlet. I love this setup in PvE. I thought it was a PvE exclusive. Anyway, uh, no wall and no wall. We're definitely going to be doing more M3s though. Oh, we got a charm. A charm for our horse from that M3, actually. What the hell was that? Ooh, large down... That's just a direct upgrade from what I'm using right now. I was using this. Medium boost to mount dash off-road. <laughs> Sweet. No artifact, though. Quick little silver M3. I think that got us a season pass level, too. I think I saw a pop-up for that. No, it's F9. Let me see. Yeah, we got to level 100 from that, which means we unlocked the Endless Thirst Earrings. Uh, I guess I'm happy to have them before they're moved to, like, an expedition or something, but I don't think I'll be making use of them. Even though I'm not using a jewelry artifact right now, I'm actually using <laughs> just regular jewelry. I just noticed that. Did we get the shield? Ah, <sighs> no. But at least it was a silver M3. And we have M3 unlocked now, so we can make our own lobby finally. Ah, uh, the best part of a new day. Buying another chromatic seal. Actually, I hope this is the second best part of the day. I hope I get the wall today. Because that chromatic ward looks like so much freaking fun now that it's properly working. And I'd really like to try tanking with it. So we'll see if we get lucky today. So far, I think I'm 12 runs into any ad for the week. Let's see. Yeah, 12. Holy crap. Ugh. These runs are so bad in public groups, bro. <laughs> Just give me the wall. Send me to Genesis. Just give me the wall artifact, please. Oh, man. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Woo! Maybe you can get it from Indie Bag. We're done. No more 56 minute runs. People don't even know what the hell a pillar phase is. I can't believe we got it. My inventory is actually full. I was convinced you could only get it from the dog, because the bird drops the Sunlord set, so I was thinking there's no way, you know, I can't even, I can't even salvage things, my inventory is too full. Oh, uh, ooh, this is, ooh, this is really nice. Although, when would you have grit when you're using VGIG? Well, 300 con void blade, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping that, that's, that's pretty nice. We got the wall artifact, guys. That's actually really, really exciting. For a couple of reasons, not only do we have it, but we can get the hell out of here. This is a really fun dungeon. This is probably the funnest mutation if you have a good team to run it with. But man. Whew, man, public groups. Well, this is a problem I didn't anticipate. We're only 45 M3s into the video, so not even halfway there. And our storage shed where we're storing all the gear we get is already full. Not in terms of weight, but in terms of unique item capacity. I can't put any more gear in here. So maybe I'll have to move some of this other stuff, but that's so inconvenient. I got 500 pounds worth of cooking materials in here. But look at all the gear we've accumulated so far. I'm not going to keep all of it, but this is just the stuff that was good enough to not instantly scrap. The gear you get from the Inyad, by the way, whew, top tier. I think it has a different perk pool from the rest of the gear uh, from other expeditions. We got so many Elia version thrust conditioning and health for some reason. I swear about, oh this one was, this one was weird, but I swear about 10 pieces of Elia version thrust conditioning and health are in here somewhere. Here, yeah, look at this, really good stuff from the Inead. We also got a ton of the Oriates Golden set and the Sunlord set. Did we finish them? I think I'm missing the skirt and the helmet. No, I got the helmet. Did I get a skirt? Oh, I, yeah, I finished the whole set, didn't I? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we finished the whole Sunlord set. What about the Oriates Golden set? Legs, gloves, boots, chestplate helm. Yeah, we finished the set for this too. Although, <laughs> they're all so weird. I don't know why this has lightning harnessing. Maybe they're thinking for like medium or heavy Mjolnir builds. Mjolnir? Mjolnir? I don't know. You guys are going to correct me in the comment section anyway I say it. Does this have slash conditioning? Yeah, these are pretty decent actually. Either way, we finished all the unique sets and the artifact from the Inead. I'm gearing up and going to have fun at Genesis.
Ooh, that was way over 20k on the Florian finish. I saw a 7, a 6.3, plus the hit itself. I'm trapped in the mushroom. Dude, can I get out of this mushroom? <laughs> Let me out. Jeez. No, no, the silence zone, that was actually so clutch. First gen run and we already got Abyss, heavy full con headpiece with shirking for it slash conditioning and health. But it looks like Genesis is actually harder than the Enyad this week. It's Ice Mutation with the silencing zones and they buffed the crap out of Genesis since the last time I did it. It's kind of hard to one phase Alluvium when there's silence zones and no one can use abilities. I actually had to swap to the Serenity just to get through that boss. And also, on the part when you're carrying the torch, after the, the giant like brute boss or whatever, there's the blizzard effect going on where the further you are away from the boss, the more damage you take. So it actually kills people carrying the torch to the brazier you're supposed to light and it slows down the dungeon by about 15 minutes. That was about an hour long Genesis run. Was I just seeing that right? Hold on, we can do better than that. 13k auto. 14.3k auto attack with the Serenity. Okay, yeah, we're gonna use this weapon. <laughs> what the hell is going on right now? I'm in medium too, by the way, look. Medium dodge. What? I'm theory crafting the tank setup that I want to use the wall artifact with, and I'm pretty sure this is the sword I've decided on. The stalagmite dropping with enchanted and hated by default, and we're gonna go ahead and use our dense Lazarus materia to try to roll refreshing move um, up front, and if not, then we'll have to upgrade it at the gypsum kiln. Probably not anytime soon, but I'd like to have the weapon on the account before I spend this Lazarus materia on something that I shouldn't. I don't think we're gonna get Lazarus Mutation for a few more weeks, so let's go ahead and spend the Materia, see if we get lucky. No, a Contagious Reverse Stab, even though that's not... that's eh, pretty bad, I probably don't even run Reverse Stab in the current tank meta. But at least we have the sword on the account now, we'll upgrade that at um, some point in time. And also, a quick little checkpoint, uh, didn't... don't think I got a clip of this, but this should be out up to 50, right? 27 plus 7 is 34 plus 16 is 50. 50 M3s! We are halfway there, and I'm dying a little bit inside with each one. I don't know why M3s are so overtuned right now. I thought Genesis was going to be a walk in the park, man. Let me tell you, it is not. It is not a walk in the park. No one's even interested in doing the higher level mutations. Everyone's interested in the M1s because, well, you get the artifact there, and M3s are so overtuned. So it's usually between 30 to 45 minutes of recruiting for each run. And then, of course, the run goes poorly, and everyone leaves. And then it's another 30 to 45 minutes for the next one, so it's a snail's pace. But we're getting there, guys. Halfway there. It's um, it's also 3 a.m. if it sounds like I'm talking so slowly. And yay, we found a healer. Let's get it. Oh, time for free hits. Look at this. Look. This man. He walks across the whole map. I love that. So today, I think we're finally going to be leveling up the wall artifact and getting our tank set together on this account. We have a pretty nice set so far, minus the gloves, but that's why we're at the Gypsum Kill. And it's just a bunch of Grit Ward, Health, and Conditioning pieces that I've accumulated through the M3s we've been doing. These boots are really nice, and these Greaves Elia versions, not bad, but I really do need Fortifying Shield Rush, so I'm just going to use them. But like I said, we're at the Gypsum Kiln because I remembered um, with your Inead Materia that you get from the Season Pass, you can actually roll some really nice heavy gloves. They're called the Scaled Gauntlets, dropping with Enchanted Ward and Slash Conditioning by default. We can actually roll two if we want, but I probably won't. There's other really nice stuff you can use your Enead Materia on, like the Dragon Steel Chestplate, which I will probably end up rolling. Flame Conditioning is so much better than Strike Conditioning, which I'm using on my Chestplate right now. And also the Insulated Helm, which I probably won't roll because I'm very happy with my Expedition Captain Helm. I just like the skin of it a lot, so I'll, I'll roll the scale gauntlets and the dragon steel, I think. Let's see what we get. Freedom! Okay, we are not going to be messing with this piece. That's a keeper. Oh, that was gorgeous. And now the dragon steel. Void harnessing. Yeah, I may have to change that. <laughs> that, one's, that one's not going to be too useful for us. Okay, so I looked into what you can actually put on this Dragon Steel, and I think I'm going with Slash Conditioning. It's kind of insane. You can do Flame Conditioning 
and slash conditioning with enchanted ward. So I picked up the drop of mercury and we're going to be crafting this now. Look at that, dude. It does not get any better than that for a heavy chest piece. We can't take advantage of Shirking Fort or Shirking Heals, by the way, before anyone says that. I know Shirking Fort is really, really good in heavy, but with the wall artifact, you can't dodge. So we're gonna... Yeah, three Chromatic Seals. I can't even fathom. I, I don't even want to think about how expensive this craft is. The Chromatic Seals are ridiculous on this game. 15k gold, three days of playing, and 60k faction tokens, but I don't care. Look at this chest plate. That's a one and done. That's that's the type of chest plate you never change out for PvP. Better than the Void Dark Plate in my opinion. Probably just run the Freedom Artifact and this instead of the Void Dark Plate from now on. Yeah, yeah, this this way too nice. Throw that on, throw that on, and now we are full heavy with the wall. Really, really nice tank set. I just have to get a sword. And we don't have the chromatic seals to upgrade the stalagmite now. I can't do that until tomorrow. Well, it looks like all of the quests are done, and it's finally time to upgrade the wall artifact at the gypsum kiln. It's a little silly, because they make you use a weapon matrix to upgrade this item, even though it counts as an armor artifact. I think this is just outdated code from when shields used to count as weapons. They would have half of your sword stats. Um, I don't know, shields have always been weird in this game. You notice we went from epic shields to artifact shields. There was, like, never a point in time when legendary shields were a thing. Um, but rambling aside, let's see what perk we're going to put on it. Probably Slash Shield Ward, as there's not many other choices. You could put a Flail perk on here, that's a pretty cool choice. But sadly, you can't put Sturdy Fortification, uh, the PvP specific perk, which I would have put if I could. So I think we're going with Slash Shield Ward. It's the only one that makes sense. Well, Fortifying Shield Rush wouldn't be bad either, but this is just too good in general. Eh, screw it. Slash Shield Ward it is. Whew, okay, the wall artifact is done, you guys. You know, we got so much dense mutator material. I'm gonna roll a few pairs of the Expedition Captain Greaves. See if we can't get a good third perk. Oh, okay, one and done, perfect. Alright, we'll take them. We'll take them. <laughs> it's just because if I want to use Flail with the wall, I don't really need the Fortifying Shield Rush on uh, the leg slot, so... Yeah, the health roll, though, that's a 15% chance, so like a 1 in 6 point something. Very, very lucky. We take those. Chipping them down, this must be so annoying to fight against, man. I'm actually winning about 80% of my games right now, just running 350 con. Alright, they gave up, but yeah, 350 con, 251 strength, just sword and shield great axe. This is toxic. It's it looks really hard to beat this. 50% fire res, 50% slash res, basically. Okay, well, look, I guess we're gonna take this, right? Shirking Fort, Sweep, and Health is pretty decent. I just don't see why the gear has to be 675, and what the hell is this? This is like the same Great Axe as the Weapon Master's Chosen. I think they really need to rework the Champion's Weapon Perk Pool, because it's just so disappointing right now. But this is decent for, a, for like, a heavy um, Spear and Sword and Shield. We'll take that. 10k Assault, kind of steep, though. Where are you going, goofball? Oh, we got a healer since when? Woo! 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 Get me out of here. That ice spike was nasty, man. Oh, come on. Oh, so close. Hit him with this, and then spike! Boom! Dead! Dang. Is that all three? Hey, I'm greedy! Doing, dude. You lived that? No. What? That, that, that. Chen. But I can't have you live in that. That makes me look bad. Ah, oh, you're pissing me off now, Chen. There we go. Ooh, that's good. 
We finally got a good pickup on the PvP track, man. Energizing evade shot, shirking heals and health on a medium headpiece. We take that all day long. These are pretty decent too. Too bad they're not upgradable though. We're 100% taking this. How many coins? 1700? Yeah, right. Ah, oh, that's a nice piece, man. Oh dear, Neptune of 15k. I'm stealing aggro a little too much with Serenity. Finish, 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 finish. You guys are crazy. Oh my god. Okay, we did our first gold M3 Genesis. There's not many people that have done that this week. You can tell by the excitement in voice chat. This is a very difficult dungeon to gold in M3. Really good team though. Shout out to Gage and Hunt. I think Gage also makes uh, YouTube content. He, did, he probably is going to upload the POV for this run if you're interested. Really good team, really difficult dungeon. Some of these runs, you guys, some of these runs are tough as nails. Getting 100 runs in one video is not easy. One and a half hours in, minus 18,000 points, two people have quit, and for some reason, a second healer joined. I was healing this one, but so was this guy apparently, so it's just a little all over the place. Let's, let's go mid, let's go mid. Fuck, he actually- Oh, he pushed me off with that ice shit. That was actually kind of cool. I got a level 20 on the ice gauntlet from a corrupted portal. Oh! These? These are pretty good. Like, maybe this? Yeah, I guess these could be considered bis. You can wear these in light armor. I'm currently wearing heavy boots, so... We'll have to see what happens to Unbroken Winds, won't we? At least we're not walking away completely empty-handed, although it still feels like it. I don't know why this abyss is so hard for me to get, man. It's like, I've been going for it for over a month. I do portal runs, like, almost every day. It's just so rare, man. If I don't get the abyss right here, I am going to level up the Mjolnir, and I'm gonna use that because I am so in the mood to use a bruiser artifact and I cannot get this stupid freaking axe. So this is it. This is the final chance you guys get. Give me this stupid axe. No, yeah. It's just not in our cards, dude. I'm leveling up the Mjolnir. Plus, I've been wanting to use it because the 50% weekend, I don't even have it on me. Yeah, it's in my storage shelf somewhere, but the 50% weekend is way better than it looks like in M3 Genesis. Because those soldiers, man, if you weaken them, it really makes a difference. That's a cool bow. Demon Tendon, 700 gear score with a nice skin on it. It's always weird when you get a weapon drop in the open world because you're like, that doesn't have attunement, it's probably not going to be very good. Let's see. Ooh, this one's kind of cool, and it's, eh, 677 gear score. Okay, that's funny. You gotta admit, that's funny. <laughs> it has a tune on it. <laughs> it still sucks, but it's that's funny. Let's equip the Mjolnir for the first time and see what quests we have to do. Oh, hero in the Inead. Okay, let's go do an M3 Inead then for sure. And Commander Thorpe in Depths, that's a meme dungeon. It's like level 40 when non-mutated. And Pharaoh Beast at Trib, so we can just do a chest run for that. Alright, piece of cake. Let's do it. Oh, we just got a really big pickup on this Inead run. A very lucky roll. The RE8's Golden Brake, or whatever the leg drop is called from the middle boss. We rolled Sundering Shockwave on that. How funny is that? I'm here to upgrade my Lightning Warhammer, and the one set in the game that drops with Lightning Harnessing, I landed a Warhammer perk on. That's actually a bigger deal than it seems. That is a very rare roll. Beautiful, man. Oh, Intelligence, I'll scrap these, otherwise I probably would have kept them. But this is just over the top in terms of rarity. And coincidence, kind of funny. Wait, what is this? We bugged the boss underground? Uh-oh. Are we going to be able to finish this dungeon? Oh, this is actually a... No. We need to kill that boss to get through this door. I hope it auto-kills it if it's stuck underground because I need this run for the week. Oh, thank god. It looks like the boss got auto-killed just from being trapped underground. 
I guess that's a nice failsafe they put in since things clip through the ground all the time. Yeah. This has got to be gold, right? Yeah, where's Hiru at? How come I can't hit him? Is he being body blocked by the dead dog? I think he was. This should be gold, yeah. Gold M3 and yet. Really, really good team. Sub 19. <sighs> I don't know what's going on at the end there with Hiru. <laughs> Didn't matter though. Let's see what we got. Sun Lord's gloves. What do we get on him? Eh, nature harnessing. Oh yeah, sure. Why not? A while back I got a clip saying, ooh, my first refreshing hearty sacred ring. Too bad it's Dex. And now I'm getting a clip saying, ooh, my second refreshing hearty sacred ring. Once again, too bad it's Dex. Ooh, we got a Hellfire bow. I saw it in there. You can't hide from me. Let's see, is it any good? Damn. It's not. We haven't had a single good piece of Hellfire gear or weapon this whole week. It's been a very disappointing Hellfire week. I was very excited at the start. Ooh. Who's dead? Okay. There we go. The final Endiad run of the week. Silver. I'll take it. That's actually a very important run for us. Now, if I did my math right, that should be M3 cash number 65 on the account. Let's see, where are they? 21 silvers plus 34 bronze is 55 plus 10 gold is 65, which means we're 35 runs off of 100. Oh, and we ended on some Hellfire pants. Pretty cool. But that's the limit for the week for us. So no more M3s this week. They're actually really nice. Yeah, sorry they were talking in voice chat, but like I was saying, we're at 65 M3 caches, which means next week, when the runs reset, if I do all 35 mutations at M3 level, we're gonna finish the goal next week. Thank God, and I really have to try to do that and get a little lucky. You can see we lost one run to a DC this week. We have 65 M3 caches and two M2s and two M1s, which were just used to rank up. Let's see, it doesn't say what dungeon they're from. I think two were from uh, Ennead and two were from Genesis to get to M3, unlocked on both of those. But yeah, we lost an M3 to a disconnect this week, which is sad. But if we play our cards right, we can still finish next week with all 35 M3s. Oh, this was a grind. This week sucked. I thought it would be a lot better with Genesis, but no, Ennead was actually easier than Genesis. They really messed that dungeon up. And I didn't see this in my inventory, but apparently on that last run, we got a full best in slot strike damage ring. The Azoth Crystal Ring with strike damage as the random third perk, which I believe is this. Okay, that gorilla right there should be the final animal we needed. Yeah, we got the refreshing mighty gavel now, and also I was wrong. It's actually only a 30% weaken on this Warhammer. I could have swore it was 50% on the PTR. This was the first artifact I tried. I swear it was 50%. It's really disappointing if they nerfed it, because that's like the only utility that this thing has to offer. It's like pretty much strictly weaker than Enfeebling Skewer now. It's... I don't know, because Warhammer's never been the best for DPS. It has good crowd control, but it would have been so nice to have a best in slot weaken on this artifact as well. Oh well. Well, I primarily organized this chest run just to knock out the quests of killing beasts here. However, check out these pants we got. Fireball Thrust Conditioning and Health. On Light Con pants were they? Yeah, light con, sweet. Those are really, really good pants. See what I mean about good stuff at Trib? Like the very next chest, void damage, refreshing, and hardy. Pretty much a bis void damage ring. And the spore light hammer. Oh my god, dude, this is really nice too. What did we roll here? I forget what it comes with by default. We either rolled Sundering Shockwave or Trench and Recovery. Probably Trench and Recovery, which is actually really good to have on a Warhammer, so we'll keep that. I don't think I'll ever use it, <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it. Four light legendaries are pretty freaking rare. <laughs> wow, leeching, refreshing, hardy too, huh? Just the craziest perk pools. I was almost gonna insta scrap this, but Dex into nature harnessing is really, really good for musket. If you're using the uh, syncretic musket. Nature Harnessing is actually Abyss perk, and these are Dex and Int, so I may as well hang on to them in case I need to fit an extra piece of Nature Harnessing into my musket setup one day. But this is how my storage sheds get filled up. I think of a really niche use case for an item, and then I'm like, oh well, time to hang on to it until the end of time. What if I need it one day? But I'm going to do exactly that, so <laughs> yeah. All these people came to help me with the Mjolnir quest, and none of them have the Mjolnir equipped. I warned them, I said, don't forget to equip Hammer before Thorpe. I hope they don't think the quest is going to be completed if it's in their inventory. 
none of them have the artifact equipped right now. I think you have to have it on as, at least as your secondary weapon, if not your primary. Yeah, none of them have it, man. Okay, did it work for me? Yeah, it worked for me. I don't know. Good luck, guys. I hope it worked for you, too. I'm out of here. Oh my goodness, look at that absolute unit of a quest sign. What the hell is that? Audience with the Pontifex. That must be a side quest. Oh yeah, it says I read the Tome Legacy of Rome. Okay, that was a mistake. That is the last time I'm reading lore in this game. What the hell is that? Well, let's go to the Gypsum Kiln and see what the final perk we're going to put on the Mjolnir is. And I keep saying Mjolnir, even though I know it's not pronounced Mjolnir because the name B-J-O-R-N is not pronounced Bjorn. It's Bjorn. It's just a bad habit I have. So there's this one guy in the comment section who keeps getting bugged every time I say that. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, okay? Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're going with our Boreal Attunement. I was thinking Trench and Strikes, which is everybody's first thought because, well, it's a Warhammer and it works off half-charged heavies and half-charged heavies are so freaking good on a Warhammer. But I don't think I'm ever really going to be using this as a primary weapon. If I am using it, it's going to be for Weaken, Rend, and Crowd Control, which is mostly going to get value out of attunement like like shockwave wrecking ball and mighty gavel none of those benefit from trench and strikes but our boil attunement does give weapon damage to all of them so i think that's the clear winner here maybe keenly empowered too can i put that that would be a good option as well but i don't see it on here i see mortal power yeah i don't see you know even if it was on here i probably wouldn't pick it maybe i'm just not seeing it it's got to be on here somewhere if mortal power is on here right keen okay whatever we're going with our boreal attunement luckily we have the dark matter i think this was all from scrapping gear um if we run low on dark matter it's gonna suck because i'm not opening these 100 m3 caches until next week so it's just gonna have to be what it is evergreen weapon shard looks good we can't put a gem setting on here by the way or else i would definitely put that and i also wish we could put lightning um attunement on here but that's not out yet i'm sure it's going to come out when the bullet caster is released and we'll probably have to recraft this weapon but for now i'd like to just finish the artifact quest get it off of my screen and complete this weapon so another weapon matrix down the drain and that's a completed mjolnir i'm getting a warhammer set up together just to screw around in 3v3s and we're going to be using that ring we got towards the start of the episode that is a lot of lightning gear uh, leeching, lightning damage, and hardy. I'm pretty sure this was... Wasn't this one of the first M3s we ran this video? A Starstone Barrows? It rings a bell. But yeah, that's what we're going to be using. Do I have a gem to put in here? I'll just put a ruby for now. I mean, Fire Staff is freaking everywhere in 3v3s. Damn, this, look at this fucking gameplay. This is so trash. Just people using big lighters on each other. I killed one. Killed two. Alright. God damn, they were whooping my ass. Hold on, let me kill three. Don't don't kill him. No, he's mine. I got dibs. I want a, I want a three drop. I want to get a UAV. Oh, man. What what kind of tracking was that, bro? What kind of tracking was that? No. No way. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. That's rude. Yeah, good and plenty. That's an old ass candy, you old head. That was an old head moment. No, that one, he just he just got zero to death. There wasn't anything he could do about that. <laughs> Ooh, not bad. I know we have the scorpion sting for PvP spear action, but the frontline point and we rolled bleeding sweep as the random third perk? That's definitely worth the 3600 salt to pick it up. That's a relatively cheap price for that spear, even if I probably won't use it. We're on track 125 by the way, still don't have the unyielding, but been having a blast. I've changed back to healing, and we're winning about, if I had to guess, I'd say 95% of our games. I don't remember the last game that we lost. Healing is just so freaking stupid right now. And flail with it, especially, like, come on. Three flails are attacking me right now. This is the most toxic match I've ever played. Oh, a legendary Soul Shroud Warhammer. I think that has Abyssal Attunement on it, which is a little silly because we just upgraded our Mjolnir. But I will check it out. Actually, let me check it out before we open the chest. Sundering clear out. It's not a bad one. Imperfect 700 as well. Whoa. Oh my god, that is... That is full bis for the Flail Assassin build. Arcane Harnessing Enchanted Ward and Health. Sucks that it has Khan on it. Ooh, these have... 
ice harnessing looking for some more ice harnessing pieces of gear but um yeah that is actually a crazy pickup whoa I always thought that the icon for these RE8's golden bracket was bugged doesn't that look like a visual bug like a pair of clipped plate legs or something but I threw on this nimble coat that I'm currently leveling up and no the bracket are indeed shorts with shin guards or something like that that is so stupid. I always thought that was a bug. Oh my god, we got it. PvP track 129, we got the Unyielding, and that is actually the last PvP artifact on the account. This was the last one we needed, at least for now, until they, I don't know, potentially add more, since all of these are getting moved down to PvP track 20 in December, which is uh, uh, just a few weeks from now, actually, which is really stupid. I, I just hope they... What's this? Healing Defense. Yeah, we're definitely taking the Unyielding. I hope they... um. How do you say, make higher PvP tracks worth getting? Because right now the unyielding onk, pest, and all that was the only reason to do so. Other than it, you just have fun. And actually, there's an influence race still going, so I should try to level this up right now. I just finished leveling up the Michael. Having a ton of fun with it. Oh, that is ugly. Ew. What? This was probably the highest value influence race I've ever done. I finished three artifacts. The Unyielding, the Michael, and the Nimble Coat. It's really cool that team kills count because it, it helps a lot. Sometimes not many people show up to these. But this one seems to be pretty active, which makes it a lot of fun. Even though my graphics card is crying. Alright, fine. It's over. It's over. Yo, chill. Chill. It's over. God damn. 1000 PvP XP, sweet! Oh, and the drag attack, what did we- Shirking Fort! We rolled Shirking Fort as the random third perk on drag attack, we are so taking that. Now I gotta make my great escape. Get off me, goofball. Ah! Hey, we got champions earrings. Sadly, we rolled refreshing on them, but I'm almost certain you can replace refreshing at the gypsum kiln. I'm pretty sure that's the perk you can replace, so we're definitely going to pick these up for 2400 because putting Healthy Toast on those would be the full bis roll. Until those new Ocean's Pride earrings or whatever they're called come out in December. I'm assuming that's in December, but either way, we'll take these for now. Now this is a tragic checkpoint 3. Look at this Predator's Greatsword. What are these perks? Not a single trenchant strikes, plague strikes, trenchant recovery, nothing. That is not a Predator's Razor, that's a lie, that's a misnomer. And these are also trash. Heavy Dex, Sundering Shockwave, and Vigor. I'm starting to notice a lot less shirking heels on these Grand Dominator pieces of gear. It used to be almost every single one that had one, and this just has the wrong weapon perk on it for the stat. Kinda silly. We'll go ahead and take the emote, because I'm sick of seeing them on checkpoint 3, and now that we have the Unyielding, we don't really need to save Azos Salt for anything, so get the emotes out of the perk pool, or out of the loot pool and hopefully see more gear. Finally, after so much waiting, the mutations have rotated and we have our final 35 runs available to us on this account. We have a choice between Dynasty and Tempest. Now sadly, because we need all 35 of our runs to be M3, I can't do any M1s or M2s and I don't have Dynasty M3 unlocked yet, so I'll have to be applying to other people's lobbies if I want to do this, which I probably will. It's a much shorter dungeon than Tempest. I do have M3 Tempest unlocked, but the Magnetic Gauntlets aren't that impressive, and uh, I mean, neither is the Sword Artifact. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad artifact, but it is better than the Magnetic Gauntlets. So in order to do Dynasty M3, I'm gonna have to be applying to people's lobbies. Uh, time to find out if Old Faithful still works. The strategy we're on wave three of the first barrel you just pull all the mobs and run it's been almost a year since i've done a mutated dynasty so i guess we'll see if this still works they did fix a lot of stuff in here like the aggro on the barrels so i know they've been working on the barrel code so hopefully this works because it's really annoying to go back and do those three waves but i may as well figure it out on the first run of the week Okay, keep moving, find the next ship to destroy. We did it. It works. Perfect. Thankfully. I gotta say, of all the M3s I've done in this episode, Dynasty is the easiest. I'm glad to see either they tuned mutations down, or this is just a very easy mutation in specific. But what makes it so long 
They give you 40 minutes to do a dynasty. This used to be like a 22 minute M10 with a decent team. Now it's a 40 minute M10 because everything has so much health. It's like that, is that, that's how they make things hard in this game. It's not more mechanics, it's just more defense and more health. And you just have to sit there and left click for longer. And I really don't enjoy that. But at least the mutation's easy and it looks like we're going to get gold. I don't think we're going to have a single bronze run this week. Unless we get a really bad team. But it is really easy. Things aren't hitting hard. Unlike the Ennead. Oh, okay. Still gold. Sweet. So we don't have to kill all the named mobs. I think we... Hello, Butcher. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> On the first run of the week. Maybe they buffed M3 drop rates. The servers did just come up from a update and let me just see what we got first let's show you guys if there's anything good oh okay there we go full best in slot dexterity earrings absolutely beautiful we keep those what about the empress Zao gloves we rolled freedom not the best but we'll keep them Ooh, slash conditioning on the azoth uh, gauntlets we'll keep those these are very nice as well. Purifying Heart on the Bloodletting Ring. That's one of the best perks you can get on this thing. Especially if you're playing um, Bleed Rapier. I'm pretty sure Purifying Heart is an S tier perk for the ring slot. You need Bloodletting, you need Hardy, and I think Purifying Heart's a top tier perk. So that's a really lucky roll for the first one of the week. Um, full Con Best in Slot Earrings. Oh my god, these are so nice. Really? The same roll twice. Alright, we'll definitely take those. Uh, strike protection on the shipyard's amulet. We'll definitely keep those as well. And those are basically the Isabella gauntlets, which I guess I'll keep. This is kind of bad. Well, I mean, nah, it's pretty bad. We'll scrap that. Pretty solid first run. Honestly, the butcher and all these good earrings. Yo, what is this? We all wiped here because there was a lag, and now I'm just stuck on the floor. Ugh. I gotta relog and be very specific, don't kick me. If I lose a single run, I'm going to cry. <sighs> Alright, that's more like it. Well, this isn't very good. It honestly feels like someone put a curse on me. This is run number two of the week. We've done one run. And I got partnered with just the worst people. The tank didn't speak English. He didn't have the right gems in his gear. He was getting one shot. The healer sucked. And everybody quit on the first mini boss. So now I've got to rebuild the team from the ground up at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday. I'm surprised people are actually interested. Maybe there's hope, but it honestly feels like someone put a curse on me. I don't think I'm going to get through all 35 runs this week. This is not a good sign. I can't believe it. I actually filled the lobby. At 2 a.m. on a Tuesday. That only took like 11 minutes. I'm impressed. Considering the servers just came back up from an update and there's not many people online. And it's a bronze run at the start. Personally, I would not join this. So kudos to these brave souls who joined this. I was inches from leaving this run and just calling it. We actually did it. It's a bronze run for sure, but we are on the final boss. And so far, I've finished all my runs for the week. I'm two out of two, baby. Well, unless the game crashes right here. There is a glitch going around where the game is crashing after this update. So we'll see. Everything's up in the air. I'm not really expecting to get through my final runs this week. But it would be damn nice. Like, really nice. Oh, man. I'm the last DPS alive again. And she's at, like, what, 65% HP? Alright, we're starting this at 47 minutes. Let's see how long I have to sit here left-clicking to finish this damn bronze run. Oh, no. <laughs> I died when the boss has like, come on, 2 HP left. I know the tank can, t can handle that, right? For a fact, the lo- Oh, the healer's dead. Oh no. Well, I mean, this is one of those runs, isn't it? <laughs> it's been this type of run from the start. Oh, brother. Come on, I gave you the- I gave you the- I gave you the layup! Ah, oh, he got it. I'm just happy we got through it. 
Thank you to everybody who came, because god damn, that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had on this game. Well, first roll of the week, and we've already landed the buckler that's good from here. The Harbinger buckler and perfect 700 with the vicious roll. It's not better than the buckler you get from Starstone Barrows, but if your weapon already has Keenly Jagged, as is the case with the sword artifact you get from here, then this buckler is actually better. So it's not a bad pickup. That is a little bit of statistical silliness. In one dungeon, we rolled three pieces of gear with Enchanted Ward and Slash Conditioning, these cloth pans, and then two pieces of the Azoth Crystal set. I wonder what the chances of that are. These are two consecutively rolled pieces of Azoth Crystal gear, both with Slash Conditioning as the random perk. Oh, that looks annoying. The tank is using the wall artifact so he can't dodge, and when she does that wave attack, you actually can't block it. So yeah, he has Chromatic Ward, but he's just getting pummeled the whole time and the healer died. Oh, brother. Okay, well, hold on a second. Let's be, let's be rational here. Damn it! God, man, I wish I could switch equipment mid-fight. Imagine I could just throw on a bow right now. Finish this off real quick. So, oh, that's annoying. I dodged! No, no way! Wait! No, this is a joke, surely. This is gonna be a one-hour Dynasty M3. I honestly could cry right now. Passing the line for me. I think I'm gonna gear up and go do some Tempest. If I'm spending almost an hour in a dungeon, it may as well be Tempest, which has better loot, and a shot at the artifact, which I don't have yet. This isn't bad for BGIG, but I'll scrap it. Let's see, anything good in here? No, alchemy, no. What do we get? Oh, those aren't bad, but... Like, you would never need Grit Ward for a musket, so just scrap it. We rolled a luck. What the? I'm not keeping that, no. Yeah, nothing good from that run, but let's gear up and go try some Tempest because screw this. So it looks like M3 Tempest would actually be a little faster than M3 Dynasty if it was working properly. There's a bug where Vroeg, the big brute that spawns here in the Cellar of Despair, takes like five minutes to spawn. So we're all just kind of kicking it here, waiting for him to spawn. Oh, it's going to be a long week. Damn, when you got the slow debuff and you're carrying the torch, you rock at a snail's pace. That was hilarious. That's probably the slowest I ever walked in this damn game. Well, at least Tempest is an easy gold. In 42 minutes, not the best. It is still a slow dungeon. Either way you do it, it's going to be a slow week, I guess. But, easy gold. Uh, for some reason, a little easier than Dynasty. Like, I don't think... They touched this one with the tuning. There was definitely some tuning going on. They left this one the same or even made it a little easier. Yep, easy gold. And here, how many chests do we get? One, two, three, four, five. Five or six. There might be one more behind that mound. Let's see, magnetic gauntlets, please. Ah, wrong type of gloves, man. Check out how many legendaries we got, though. This is before opening the chest, too. So let me see, where was the last legendary at before I came in here? Way down here. The helmet right after these pans on up is all the legendary gear we got and for weapons from this kite shield on up is all the legendary weapons. Let me open all these chests and then we'll have a look at it. An insane amount of legendaries, like probably 20 just from this run. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice buckler. Hold on. <laughs> I'm actually going to keep that. If you're ever DPSing, perfect 700 too. If you're ever DPSing a void dungeon, this is actually bits if you're using sword and shield so we're definitely going to keep that we drop some of these tiny gems i don't know why we don't have a gem bag yet this is absurd and loot the last chest here looks like there's five chests in total blues perfect all right let me look through these legendaries there's a lot to look through there's got to be something good in here eh, a little underwhelming for how much there was to get through but we did have one full best in slot pickup in my opinion it's the best in slot it's not the gear but we'll touch on the gear really quick um, what do we get? Where did this start at? Right here, I think. This was the first item worth keeping. Strike Conditioning, Enchanted Ward, Purifying Heart on the Azoth Ring, some more Enchanted Ward Health, Enchanted Ward Health. Pretty all-around decent shoes. A decent Crippling Ring? I don't know if you're playing Support IG, this might be worth using, I'm not sure. Refreshing, Crippling, and Hardy are all S-tier perks for an Ice Gauntlet. Isabella Gauntlets, we rolled Empowering Breaker on these, I do believe, and just some pretty decent uh, light bruiser pants. I don't know if they're ever going to see the light of day, but I'd rather keep them instead of regretting it. Anyway, on to the full abyss, in my opinion. Skewer, Vicious, and Jagged. 
I think that's a 3 out of 3 best in slot if you're running it as an offhand for the weekend. It doesn't... I mean, it's pretty much what I'm running right now, but Skewer instead of Cyclone. So yeah, I would I would count this as Abyss. I don't run Skewer, but 47% weekend, man. I, I'm very glad we got this as a pickup. And this Great Axe is kind of a meme, but I figured I would keep it just because of how much cooldown it has. Refreshing move and Mortal Refreshment. I'm pretty sure we rolled Mortal Refreshment as the random perk. Um... 10% on kill, which is actually pretty good if you're maining the Great Axe. I imagine that's going to proc a lot during a dungeon. Pretty big cooldown reduction. And if you're main handing the Great Axe, then you're also going to get benefit out of the grab well because the grab well on the weapon itself actually doesn't proc if you change weapons. So this is a really good Great Axe if you're main handing it, which is tempting. It is tempting to do so. Oh no, that's a new bug. Oh, that should not be hitting me through this. Oh, that's, that's a very... Oh! I pressed E to try to use the cannon, but wipe. That's a very dangerous bug. Damn, that run we just did was actually rank 6 for overall score this week. And that's... That's annoying. We lost it by 250 points and we skipped all the Oracalcum nodes right before the final boss. We were on good pace. It was like a 24-52 run sub-25, so I was like, yeah, let's just send it. I want the... I want the dungeon to be over, but if we mined those nodes, we would've got top 5. We'll try to do that next run, for sure. Good team. You know, I'm actually starting to be more open to the idea of mortal power. I just put it in the group chat as low-key bis, but it might be, right? A 15% in power for 20 seconds on kill? I imagine this has almost 100% uptime when you're running expeditions, way better than keenly empowered. Mortal power just got such a bad rap back in the day, but I don't know, it might be good. This spear might actually be like a best in slot PvP spear, or PvE spear, my fault, not PvP. I am going to hang on to that for sure. No, oh, no, I got it. Okay. A little known fact about this first boss invoker Yao is he doesn't have grit when he does his slam attack. So even if you don't have a stun, or just a stagger, or a um, knockdown, like Sweep will stop him from doing his slam attack. He's very unique in that sense, because every other boss in this dungeon that has a slam attack has grit while they're performing the slam attack. So, it's actually a nice thing to know. Oh, that's not good. There's our first lag detected for the week. Oh boy, I hope I don't lose this run. <laughs> oh boy. Check my internet. Says I still have internet. Can I load a YouTube video? Nope. Oh god. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. I can indeed load a YouTube video. Let's see. I don't know. I'm scared to hit reconnect. Do I press it? I pressed it. Don't bench me. I don't think I was gone that long. Unless they kicked me instantly, I think we should be okay. Okay, alright, we're here still, we're here, I'm gonna skip that other Oracalcum note, I just need to get back and start fighting. <laughs> Boy, two times in one run, huh? This must be some kind of unlucky, okay, there we go, we're back, we're back. Wait, oh, three times in one run, okay, just making sure, gotta make sure we set the record. <sighs> oh, man, okay, let's go for four, let's get four. Oh, we're really choppy. Yeah, there, there we go. There's number four. You guys don't know how long it took me to recruit for this M3. What time is it? Two I've been recruiting for an hour and 40 minutes. Oh my god. These last runs are a pain in the freaking butt. This game is dying, bro. I swear, it's a Saturday night. It took me an hour and 40 minutes to fill an M3 dynasty. And this is the easier mutation for the week. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. We're almost there. No, you guys. The drops have been so miserable tonight. This was the first good drop of the entire night. And it's dexterity and focus. Like, come on, guys. This would have been a really nice headpiece. And then we rolled this, Elia version refreshing in FSG. Would have been really sweet, but it's dexterity. I guess it doesn't really matter because it's medium, and when you're healing, you need to use the nimble coat, which is medium, so you can't exactly use anything else that's medium. Sadly, those are both scrappers, but quick update, 
We are up to, uh, what's this, 60, 65 plus 26 is 91. We are at 91 M3s. Nine more to go. Man, they are so lazy at Amazon. I swear I've never seen so many copy-paste mistakes in a game in my life. Eternal Kite Shield, yet it has Arboreal Conditioning. They just copy-pasted the Abyssal Conditioning one from Void Mutation. Oh my god, did it happen? Did it finally happen? How many runs in are we? This looks like 94. 94 M3s into the video, and we have filled up the storage shed that we set out to store gear in. 500 drops from the M3s we've done so far. And we have just about everything we could ever want in this storage shed. I'll have to go through a quick breakdown of the gear at the end of the video, but yeah, 500 pieces of gear in here, and we're already redlining on our inventory. So that means we need to start putting this gear somewhere else. We need to overflow our gear into another storage shed. We've gotten so many good things, you guys. So many good things. We're so close to the end of the freaking challenge, but I can't keep this gear on me. You know what, here's 300 pounds of resources that are worthless. I'll just withdraw these. We're gonna go ahead and drop those. And we're, st we're gonna start storing all of our gear here in the bullseye. So let's dump what we got, which is a lot. <laughs> At least there's no other gear in here to make it confusing for us. Is that good? No, it keeps going. Look at these pants, by the way. Refreshing, lightning, harnessing, and health. Beautiful for the Mjolnir. Or technically for the bow in the future, the bolt caster. If you're using featherweight, you can use light greaves or heavy greaves and still be in light armor. I've been up for... Uh, I wanted to scrap these. I've been up for about 25 hours now. I'm trying to pump out this challenge right at the end, so... I'm gonna start slurring my words here. However, we're about to finish the challenge, so just hang in there with me. You know, as I cheesed this barrel in Dynasty, I was running and I saw this... Okay, that's annoying. And the worst part is I can't unstuck because... Apparently they fixed any potential unstuck cheese and it teleports you back to the start of the expedition. So I'm gonna have to walk all the way around. I think I'll be okay though, I'm about to get oxygen back. But as I was walking, I saw that spear in my hands and I was like... That's silly. We're still using the same spear that we got as a drop, I think on run number three of the episode. The one for mutated starstone barrels with leeching cyclone. You guys don't know how much blood is on this spear's hands. This thing has probably healed me over 10 million HP in this episode. <laughs> it was just a silly little realization. I have not changed weapons pretty much once this whole episode. Maybe a little rapier play in the middle, but other than that, nothing else. Okay, check it out. Now back in the day, around 2020, 2021, this drop would have actually been worth about 700k gold on the game. I've actually seen it actually sell, this is an actual sale, for over 1.5 million gold. But on average, they went for about 700k. I was really heavily into the weapon smithing, weapon smithing scene back in the day. But this great axe, keen, refreshing move thwarting strikes. Yeah, <laughs> in old Biss, we've just landed that. I'm not going to scrap it, even though I'll never use it, just for the sentimental value. I can't believe I have one of these on this account. Oh, I couldn't do it last night. God damn it. I fell asleep. I think there's four runs left. Where are we at? Four runs left. Oh boy. Let's get into it. Who are you? Oh, that was a lot of damage on that rapid shot. 6k, 6k, 9k? What is that? 21k? <laughs> That was pretty good, and the funny thing is I don't even have a corrupted coating on this bow, I'm not gonna lie. When I swap to my weapon, I swap from Great Axe to Bow Secondary halfway through, and I don't swap coatings, so that was without a coating. That could have been way bigger. Well, a quick tally of the reward caches in my inventory tells me that we have done 99 M3s so far, which means we are on the final mutated expedition for this video, M3 number 100. And I feel like going out with a bang, so we're going to be sending an M3 Tempest, if I can ever fill the lobby. I've been recruiting for about 45 minutes so far, and not a single person has even applied to the lobby. Like I've said in the video, M3s just don't offer enough reward, nobody is interested in them. So we'll see if I can get a group together for this. But I really did not expect recruiting to be such a boring part of this video. I've probably spent somewhere between 8 and 13 hours just recruiting in this episode. It's honestly been a major part of my life lately, just sending out recruitment messages into the void and hoping someone will apply. 
it feels like I'm playing on a server of NPCs or something. I know that's not the case, because people are just not interested in M3s due to a lack of reward, but it feels like it. The good lord has blessed me with the healer. Okay, things are moving. Except, okay, no, no takesy backsies. You are not allowed to leave. You guys want to hear a short, sad story? You get a great axe. It has thwarting strikes and refreshing move and a weapon perk, but happens to be a refreshing charge. God damn it, dude. So close. Oh, uh oh. There goes the healer. Oh, there goes me. <laughs> Let's not end this last run like this. Hold on. Oh, there goes the tank. Alright, that's a free res. Pretty lucky. I don't think we should have to clear these pillars. We should be able to DPS this down over here. Full send. Come on, guys. Oh, wait. Is it just... Oh, I see. It's, <laughs> it's just me and one other DPS. Okay, we can still do this, though. She doesn't have that much HP. Okay, easy peasy. That should still be gold for run number 100. Silver! Oh, I'm disappointed. I'm going to let my cat out. Uh, just for context, how close were we to gold? Look at that. 992 points off gold. Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, let's go see what we got from Isabella to wrap up. He got the magnetic gauntlets. I did not. However, I did get eternal boots. Those are rather exciting. Yeah, those are actually pretty exciting. I like those. See what I mean about not enough people being interested in M3's prime common right here. I have a full set of syncretic gear, all luck for ECRs, pretty much crafting, gathering, running around in ECR, all I do in this game. Nobody's interested in M3s anymore. M10s used to be the thing. But on a separate note, we did land another refreshing move grade. Ike's Keen Vicious Refreshing Move, Perfect 700. I'll keep it. I probably will never use it, but I'll keep it. Trash Spear. Time to throw all this in the storage shed. And um, I'm not going to show you over 500 items. I'm sure you can infer why. That would take freaking forever and it's not that exciting. But I'll give you a quick look at um, what we did get. Actually, I don't know how I would give you a quick look. How about this? Let's go to Brimstone Sands and type in just a couple random weapon perks and see if we got anything. Did we get Enfeebling Skewer items? We got one piece of Enfeebling Skewer, pretty much Abyss Azoth Crystal Breastplate. We did actually get a roll of that. The best in slot Enfeebling Skewer Spear from, I think, Dynasty we got that from. Did we get, what about Leaping Strikes? Anything with that? A bunch of gear with Leaping Strikes. Thrust Conditioning Dex. We landed the Smile Breastplate with Leaping Strikes. Pretty much a bunch of average gear. We landed an Abyssal Attunement Sword with Leaping Strikes. I don't remember getting this. This whole episode is a blur. This is from Genesis. Did we get something with Fortifying Sacred Ground? Two pieces. An Immemorable Breastplate, which is good, but it has int on it. And for some reason, Blood Drinker is showing up. Um, Sacred must be somewhere on here. I can't find it, though. Anyway, that's that's a little strange. Did we get anything with Sundering Shockwave or Sundering anything? We got a Sundering Javelin Spear. You, you get the idea. I'm just going through the perks here, but we have pretty much anything we could ever want on this on this account in terms of um, in terms of weapon perks. Rain of Arrows. We got a Hellfire Bow with Rain of Arrows. I don't remember getting that. We got Rain of Arrows on the Azoth Crystal Bow. It was it was an interesting journey. We have a lot of freaking gear now. And in terms of dark matter, I don't know how much dark matter we're going to get from this. 100 M3. Go ahead, tally them up. Do the math. Took me three freaking weeks. Do the math. Let's see. Let me do the math, actually. 25 plus 28 is 53 plus 47 is indeed 100. How much dark matter do we have right now? We have 855 dark matter. Let me crack these open, and I'll check back in. We'll see how much we have. Oh, that feels so good to crack that open, dude. Oh, they've been sitting in my inventory for three freaking weeks. Two, one, zero. No more M3 caches on the account. Let's see. 3,879 dark matter, huh? I'm, pr I'm gonna go ahead and say that is a life supply. Yeah, I'm gonna use that word, life supply. I don't think I will ever use more than 
nearly four freaking K Dark Matter. That's nice, because I was actually com almost completely out. I got that 855 or whatever it was from scrapping legendaries from M3s, but prior to that, I was like completely out. This, I don't think I'll run through. Maybe until season five, when some actual artifacts that are worth using come into the game. <sighs> anyway, I would like to thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, which nobody did, maybe one person who fell asleep and forgot to pause the video, um, go ahead and comment kitty cat. Comment kitty cat. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys with a much more casual episode in the next video, episode 101. See you then.